I've got an update on that new sensor architecture that will improve dynamic range, contrast, and reduce crosstalk. This isn't a rumor. This is coming from internal Canon documents. So what improvements can we expect? And when can we expect them? Well, I'll break it down for you in baby steps. And if you're serious about staying ahead of the latest camera curve, then please hit the like and subscribe button. We really appreciate it because it helps this channel get noticed. In Canon's patent application, JP 2025-0855-88, filed on November the 24th, 2023, and published recently on June the 5th, 2025. Canon claims to provide a technique advantageous for suppressing a multiplication factor. At first, this might seem like a bit of a sleeper, but it's not. Canon's at it again, digging microscopic trenches into their sensors, like they're preparing for a photon war. Now, when I covered patent application JP 2025-08-4928, I said that Canon is developing their next generation sensor technology piece by piece. And we'd see more related patents filed. And that's what JP 2025-08-5588 is. But first, let's recap what trenches are and why this architecture's so important for the next generation of cameras. JP 2025-08-4928 had a bold idea. When a photon hits the sensor in avalanche mode, it gives off a little bit of light, called avalanche emission. Incoming light bounces around inside the sensor like a toddler on a sugar rush. Hitting the... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just picturing that right now. Um, anyhow, back to the sensor. So the incoming light bounces around like a, a toddler on a sugar rush hitting all the other pixels, and that's what's commonly referred to as crosstalk, which results in less contrast, less detail, sharpness, and unfortunately, what we all hate, it raises the noise floor. And this is all bad stuff. So Canon built tiny trenches into the silicone, smaller than the wavelength of light, which is what it wants to avoid due to all that crosstalk. Now, these are shown in figure eight of the patent application that I showed you earlier, which I'm showing you again here. Pay attention to reference numeral 325. Canon also added a gradual change in the material, so light effectively slows down, changes direction gently, and doesn't splash into neighboring pixels. As Canon put it, the reflection of the avalanche emission light becomes small. And of course, photographers are saying, finally, some peace and quiet. Now here's where it gets a little bit spicy. Canon's new patent application, JP 2025-08-5598, the one we're talking about here, does build upon the previous one that we talked about, 08 but it makes it a little bit more detailed and practical. Canon now adds a stacked structure on top of the sensor substrate. Figure 8 shows that this is new, well, it's a new uneven trench structure, and that the optical absorption layer underneath is to soak up stray light, like a black hole for photons. They also place a dielectric film over the trenches to help manage light even more precisely. Canon is shaping these trenches like multi-level steps, which helps absorb the scattered light rather than reflect it. So basically, it's like a light diffusing sponge built into the sensor, or as Canon puts it, even when avalanche emission light is generated, light can be prevented from being reflected on the back surface and entering other pixels. So less photon splash, more pixel discipline. Well, they're definitely attacking crosstalk here. Now, obviously, Canon knows that this isn't meant to stay on paper to look cool and put on a shelf and say, hey, look what I did this year. So in paragraphs 0035 to 0040, Canon provides the how behind the trench design and how it can be built using existing semiconductor processes. Translation, they're not just dreaming, they're preparing for production in real sensors, possibly even in cinema gear and mirrorless gear. So what does all this trench talk mean to you? If this actually makes it into, well, future mirrorless camera sensors, 
your shadows could get cleaner with less noise, low light video gets smoother, and more advanced depth aware autofocus or 3D mapping gets more reliable, all while being easier to mass produce. And that's a big leap forward from just interesting lab tech. This could definitely power Canon's next wave of sensor tech. Think SPAD sensors, global shutter sensors that they've been working on for many years now. It could also be applied to LiDAR style autofocus or even crazy high dynamic range. Canon's building these trenches like they expect a photon invasion and well, I don't know about you, but I'm definitely here for it. Now, when Canon did publish the previous patent application 2025 084928, I told you that this was definitely a big deal and that we'd see more patent applications building upon it. Is there more to this story? Yeah, you bet. In fact, I expect many more patent applications to improve upon the sensor design ready for the next generation. Improvements to the photoelectric conversion unit and the processes that take the photons, convert them into electrons. All that, the, the software, but also the hardware level where we're redesigning the trenches so that way we avoid crosstalk, which is about stray light. Now, I get a sense that this is not something that we're going to see in cameras coming out in 2025, 2026, or even 2027. I think what we're likely to see is this technology in a new sensor design probably coming out sometime in 2028 or 2029, and specifically into cameras like the Canon EOS R1, obviously the Mark II, and the Canon 5 series, the, the EOS R5 Mark III. I am super excited by these types of patent applications. I just find them interesting, and it's not because it's going to make my next camera better. It's actually because I'm better understanding what goes into the cameras how sensors are designed, the different types of units or sections on the chip that perform certain things, and how photoelectric conversion devices devices or units work, and how trenches work, how these trenches or wells are able to trap the electrons, and how, if it's completely full up and saturated, well, that's where we get the clipping of the highlights. And if we get it way, way down low, well, that's into the shadows, and that's why making these wells a little bit more deeper a little bit more effective and avoiding stray light does help improve dynamic range. At the stage we are in technology, it's not just about fine tuning one thing. You fine tune one thing, and that means you have to fine tune a whole lot of other things. I guess the best way to relate this to something a little bit more down to earth is a car. A lot of us use a car on a daily basis, and a lot of us actually love cars. We like to personify them. We like to customize them so they reflect who we are and not just a car like everybody else's. If you go ahead and put a new suspension in your car, well, it's not just about fine-tuning the suspension. You have to fine-tune a whole lot of other things. It's like, put, or putting a, let's say you put in a beefier engine or you change the timing or you modify various chips that control the engine. That gives it more performance, but then you have to update, again, the wheels, the brakes, the tires. Um, suspension, all that stuff, struts, right? And that's what's going on here. There's an awful lot. I'm, I, I'm glad that first patent application kind of set the scene, and that's uh, 2025-084928. That's the one that really said, you know what? This isn't a small deal. This is a big deal. This isn't something. This isn't something you put on a shelf. This is a very deliberate attempt to deliver the next generation sensor, and. I think that's a good thing. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. One thing I would like to tell you about, um, if you really like this channel and you're the 1% of the 1% that wants to know as much as you can, especially what goes on behind the scenes, well, by clicking on the join button, there's two options of members. There's the $1.99 a month Shutterbug member, and then there's the $9.99 a month um, uh, Insider. And what you get with Insider is, is I publish once a week Insider videos telling you about what goes on behind the scenes. as and as insiders, you can ask me questions and I'll do videos just on that behind the scenes. Uh, we can also do private live streams. That's something I'm looking to do very soon. And I think this would be cool, not just to do a live stream, but bring you into it and um, try it out. Now, it's not going publicly. We just do it with other insiders. But it, give, it would give you the training to actually join a live stream. And maybe if you like it enough, you could join my expert guest panel in a future 
upcoming announcement, like the R6 Mark III, the R7 Mark II, the Nikon Z9 Mark II, or even the Sony A7 V. There's an awful lot coming out in the next little while. And a big thanks to all of you for still watching to the very end. And if you are interested in supporting this channel in other ways, such as you need to buy gear and you want to buy from Adorama, B and H, or Amazon.com, or I'm actually starting to chase Walmart now, Walmart is getting serious into the camera industry. Um, I'm curious to see where they go with this. Um, but I looked on their website and they've got various deals on the Canon EOS R5. I saw it as low as $4,700. And I actually asked Walmart, I said, how come you've got multiple different versions of the R5 that are supposedly coming directly from Canon for different prices? And it doesn't mention whether it's um, out of the box or even what else was it? Uh, you'd have out of the box, you'd have refurbished, or you'd have a sale or the regular price, right? Those are your various options. So I haven't heard back but it's something to definitely follow. Anyhow, thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great day, a great night, and um, we'll see you again soon.